Hey, welcome, uh, welcome to Japan. This is our home in Japan for the next 30 days. My wife and I wanted to see what it would be like to live in the suburbs of Tokyo for a month. So that's what we're doing, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about TikTok. This video is where we make your TikTok life so much easier and the editing process so much faster and so much more enjoyable. We've compiled a list of free tools for you to try and then cry because you're sad that you didn't know about them earlier. And then there's a bonus tip at the end that's not free, but it's brand new and it's a game changer. I bought it so fast. In fact, some of you might actually already have it and not know about it. Anyway, let's jump into it. Let's talk about tips for making your TikTok life so much easier. Hey, I wanted to double check something real quick and make sure you've heard about the one-stop shop for all your stream alert and overlay needs, owned.tv. In case you didn't know, Senpai Gaming is back with owned.tv for all our stream designs and we are working on some juicy stuff for you guys. Owned makes some absolute classic overlays and if you've spent any time watching Twitch, you've probably seen a handful of them. For example, check out the Glitch series, which is super simple, so it works with anybody's stream style, but it's also got these really cool glitched out elements for their alerts and overlays and stuff. And everything you need is in there, like your alerts, your overlays, your banner, your panels. You just pick up one package and it's got everything. And look, while you're there, check out their other best sellers that got a bunch of good stuff. I'll leave a link in the description down below that'll get you 50% off of anything, or just use code Senpai at checkout. And that, by the way, that link helps support the channel, so. Thank you. Anyway, I'm gonna hand this off to the master editor in command, Dustin. Take it away, homie. Hello, yes, I am Dustin, the editor of this channel, Harris's personal channel, 30 Second Tech. By the way, if you aren't following uh, 30 Second Tech, go do it now. It's literally just this channel, it's just shorter. But anyways, I edit for my own channel and everything else that I do on the side. Being a video editor is not as glorious as it seems. Welcome to the dungeon that I edit in while Harris is out of town. Are you scared? You should be. Sorry, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be editing this clip that I have right here and editing it two times. Once the slow way, and then once the fast way, and then compare. I'm not really doing it anymore, but just so you have a sense of some kind of credibility here, I've made a lot of this type of short form content as you can see. And then what I've done is I've basically lumped these tips into like three different categories, and then we're going to jump into each of those categories and cover things that I think apply specifically to this type of editing, or any content really. The first category is the setup, the second category is hotkeys, and the third category is the interface. Harris is going to be covering the first part of the setup, and I just have to say that this was not created when I made all of these clips that you see right here. I'm not even kidding when I say that if this would have existed when I made all of those clips, I would have saved probably hundreds if not thousands of hours on all of those clips, and probably my sanity. Now real quick, let me edit this clip before I pass you on to Harris. I'm not having fun right now. I've edited for so long using hotkeys that it's painful right now to edit without them. Editing is not even fun. Bro, I'm not even kidding. How do people edit like this? I'm going insane. So this first one in particular is for live streamers like on Twitch that wanna take clips of their stream and make them TikToks really easily. If that's not you, I'll put the uh, the chapters in the in the progress bar down here, you can skip to the next one. But this is a free OBS plugin that you can use that will take vertical format clips while you're live. So no more scrubbing through hours of live footage after you're done, no more searching through hundreds of clips that your viewers made for you, no more losing footage because you're downloading transcoded footage from Twitch. This plugin is called Vertical and it's free and it just adds a second canvas in OBS next to your main canvas. And just like the main canvas, you add vertical scenes, vertical sources, you set up a vertical scene the exact way that you want your TikToks to look with your overlays, your cameras, your alerts, anything that you want. And then underneath that canvas, you can see there are buttons to record indefinitely. You can live stream to vertical platforms, or you can use something called backtrack recording. And how that backtrack option works is while you're live, if something happens that you wanna be a TikTok, you hit the backtrack hotkey that you set up in the settings and it retroactively records the previous two, three minutes however long you decide to set it up. And bam, just like that, OBS has saved a vertical version of the moment that just happened, ready for you to trim off the edges a little bit, maybe add a call to action or whatever, and upload. Easy peasy, done. And because it's being recorded right in OBS, you get full, all quality footage. Seriously, look at the difference between these two right now. One is ripped from Twitch, one is using the vertical plugin. But now that you have your vertical footage, I'm gonna pass this back to Dustin. He's gonna take it to the next step. 
Take it away, good sir. And take it away, I will. Now it's true that those clips are ready for upload for short form content, but those who want to be more advanced and spice up their content more, that's what I'm here for. Let's go ahead and play that clip. I just edited. Up top, dude, they got atrocious aim. So do I, apparently. Oh, hello. So how long did it take me to edit that clip? The slow way, 43 minutes and 46 seconds. Then the fast way, it took only 28 minutes and 13 seconds. So it's about a 15 minute difference. Now that may not seem like a lot to you, but even just trimming off 10 minutes on one clip, if you're editing 30 clips and you can save five to 15 minutes per clip, that means you'll save between two to eight hours of time spent editing. Now, this is also including the time it takes to go to Twitch and download that clip, just so you're aware. You have to think of it that way though. Everything you do adds up. So the next part of the setup portion is your project settings. When you set up a project for vertical content on the master settings, change this to use vertical resolution. We're gonna be using 1080 by 1920 and whatever frame rate that you use. I'm going to choose 60 FPS since that's what my clips are recorded in. Then scroll down and change the proxy media format, the optimized media format, and the render cache format to ProRes 422 Proxy. You should have this option on Windows. If not, you may have to do a little research on what's best for Windows. Next, go to the image scaling and then change this to scale full frame with crop. This is going to scale any clips that are not the correct resolution. This is what I like for my workflow. If you don't like this, you can always change it later. Now, the best part, before we click save right here in the bottom right corner, go up here to the three dots, click that, and then do save current settings as preset. Boom, you now never have to change this again. Anytime you create a new project for vertical, you can just load in this preset. As you can see, I have a few different presets here. Now there's one tip when you're importing your media that I wanna show you. If you try dragging in a folder, it won't retain that folder. It'll just import the clips and you have to create a bin to put those clips in if you wanna keep things organized. Now, instead of doing this, right click, and then do add folder and subfolders into media pool. In parentheses, it'll say create bins. Now you've retained that folder full of clips. That's pretty much all you need to know when it comes to the setup portion of this. Let's move on to the hotkeys portion. I'm going to be editing in the edit page. Now I do like the cut page, but the cut page probably makes more sense for like editing a stream or like a YouTube video. In this case, the edit page is going to work better for what we want, but don't be afraid to mess around in the cut page. Now I'm going to have Harris leave a link in the description where you can download the hotkeys that I use in this video. Most of the hotkeys are the default that Resolve uses, but I did change a few things, which I will let you know what I changed. The first is I changed the number one to be append to end. What this does is it'll put a clip at the end of your timeline. One thing to know as well, since we are using the vertical plugin, we now don't have to duplicate the clip, crop our camera and stack it above our gameplay thanks to that vertical plugin. It's really not hard to do this. It just gets old and it saves us way more time. Now, once we start cutting this clip down, the most useful hotkeys are going to be ripple deletes. What these do is they will make a cut at our playhead and delete everything forward or backwards and in the process move our clips as well. Kind of like this. So I have Q set to delete everything backwards from our playhead and W to do the same thing but forward. The default for that was command, shift, and then left or right bracket, but I prefer it being one button here. It's really because this is how it was on Premiere and I just think it's better. By the way, in the slow version, you would have to click on the blade tool, make a cut, delete this clip, 
highlight your clips, then move your clips over. Really annoying. On a side note, let's say that you want to make a quick cut with the blade tool. Just click Command B and boom, you made a cut. Let's also say you have a segment that you've cut and you wanna delete and do that same ripple delete. So like right here, I have a clip. Don't just click it, press delete, then highlight your clips and move it over. Or even click this space here, click delete again, click the clip, then hold shift and then click delete and boom, you ripple deleted. Let's say as well you wanna scrub through your clip quickly as you're cutting. If you press L twice, it'll play back the footage at twice the speed. Or if you wanna go in reverse, click J. Click it again to go faster. But let's say that you wanna go frame by frame. You can just use the arrow keys. But what I like to do is I like to hold K and then hit L or J to move forward or backwards frame by frame. Nice. But wait, maybe you cut a little too many frames and you wanna bring some back without messing anything up on your timeline. So for example, I wanna bring some of this fight back into the clip. It's easy, just click T, and then it'll turn on this trim edit mode. Then when this icon appears, move it left or right, and look, it moves your clips as you bring back more of that clip. Wow, but wait. Maybe I wanna rearrange these clips. Don't highlight it and then like move it around weirdly like now. Just highlight the clip and then click your comma or period button to move it around without messing anything up. Amazing. This is another one that I remapped. It used to be, I believe, command shift period or comma. I just swapped it since period or comma would basically do the same thing as what the trim edit mode would do before. So this is just easier for me. There's just so many alt earn it ways to do things. See what I did there? My last hotkey is alt. Now I suggest you go watch a video on what holding alt can do. And just as a quick example, let's just say that I wanna duplicate this clip. If you click it, and then hold Alt and drag up, it'll duplicate it. But wait, what if you wanna duplicate just the video? Hold Alt, then click on the video, then hold Alt and drag above it. Yeah, mind blown. So anyways, there's a ton of hotkeys that can really help you when it comes to editing faster and more efficiently. And seriously, I'm not lying when I say it was really painful to edit without hotkeys. Let's move on to the interface portion of this video. Basically, I'm just going to cover things on the interface of Resolve that make, let's say, the final pass of the edit much more efficient and much easier. The first thing actually goes hand in hand with the hotkeys portion, but you don't have to memorize hotkeys. Say what? Let's say I wanna insert a clip right here in between these two clips. You can drag that clip onto your timeline window and you'll see a bunch of options on how to add this clip to your timeline. So I wanted to insert this clip. So let's highlight that and let go. And as you can see, it'll add the clip wherever my playhead is and it doesn't mess anything up. Oh yeah, the next one, it's extremely nice. If you notice you're using a lot of graphics or sound effects or something like that a lot, you can put those in what's called a power bin. As you can see right here, this is my power bin. These are a bunch of Senpai gaming assets and then these are a bunch of sound effects. And the best part, no matter what project you open, all of those graphics and sound effects will exist in that power bin. Holy. Speaking of things that you use over and over again, let's say you have the same thing, but they are effects or plugins instead. On your effects tab, you can actually favorite everything that you use quite often, and it'll be right here in your favorites. So now you don't have to go search for it every single time. If you haven't watched our video about plugins yet, you better go do that now. I'll wait. No, I won't. The next part about your interface is the inspector. When you pull this up, it'll have a lot of tools that you may use a lot already. They're already right here, ready to be used on that clip. The big one for this example is speed change. Really easy to just speed things up from this dial right here. And be sure to check a uh, ripple timeline. Now this last one goes hand in hand with the inspector and it's this little icon right here. If you click the arrow, you'll see you'll have some options here. Let's just click on the transform one. Now, instead of having to use the inspector to zoom in and position your clip, you can just do it right here, so much faster. Or 
a really cool one. Let's say you want to slowly zoom in or zoom out on a clip. Change to dynamic zoom. See these two boxes right here? The green one means where you're going to start your framing and the red is where you're going to end your framing. Now you do have to go over to the inspector and enable dynamic zoom, but you can also swap these squares if you'd rather start zoomed out and then slowly zoom in. And you can reposition the squares just like this to control how and where you zoom in on the clip. And you don't have to do any kind of keyframes. Okay. Now for this last one, Harris mentioned that there's a bonus. I'm sure a lot of you really want auto captions in Resolve. Well, guess what? They just added it in the beta version, which you can go download right now, and it will be in a full release version soon. But unfortunately, it's not free. You do have to own the studio version of Resolve. Unfortunate, I know, but it is in Resolve, and all you have to do is click Timeline, and then go to create subtitles from audio. You can't add animations yet or anything like that to the captions, and it's not perfect, but it's so nice that it exists in Resolve now. And that's everything. I guess I'm ending the video again. I don't see Harris have an outro. So I hope this all made sense to you and you found some value out of this video. Be sure to like it and subscribe and do all those things because you've watched it this long, so you might as well. There will be links to everything in the description, including 30 Second Tech and my YouTube channel if you find any interest in me and my content. Comment down below if you'd like me to return and what you'd like me to cover in a video. I'm genuinely curious. But until the next video though, happy editing.